Troy Brewer wide open three couldn't get it to go Pekovic the hustle to come up with the basketball Watch the two big guys come these guys get out of the way <laughs> Welcome back you guys, and even though the Minnesota Timberwolves were pretty bad in the early 2010s, they had a front court duo with Kevin Love and Nikola Pekovic that made them pretty fun to watch on offense at times. Kevin Love was the power forward that could post up or stretch the floor, and Nikola Pekovic slowly grew into one of the scariest and strongest players in the league. In the year 2018, Kevin Love is an NBA champion and has played in three straight finals, but his front court teammate Pekovic is out of the NBA. Some interesting things have happened to Pekovic since he's been out of the league. I think you're going to want to stay to the end, so let's talk about his time before the NBA, his time in Minnesota, and what he is doing right now. Before Nikola Pekovic would become one of the best post-up players in the NBA, he was winning championships in Serbia. With the basketball club called Partizan, he was a part of three straight title teams in Serbia's basketball league, and in his last year with the club, he was picked as the MVP of the Final Four. He was 22 years old at this time and was slowly establishing himself as a tough center inside that you can throw the ball to to get you a quick bucket. He was a bit more athletic around this time than he was during his years in the NBA for obvious reasons. He was younger and did not weigh as much. After the third championship, he entered in the 2008 NBA draft and he was picked with the 31st pick, but he stayed in Europe to play for Panathinaikos in Greece. I believe that's how you pronounce that club. In Greece, he got more mature as a player and continued to build off his accomplished career in Serbia. In his first year, they won the 2009 EuroLeague title and he was picked as the first team center for the All EuroLeague. When he came to the NBA, Pekovic did not do too much. He fouled way too often and was a defensive liability. In 65 games, he played around 14 minutes per game. The 2010-2011 Timberwolves were pretty bad, they only won 17 games and Pekovic was playing behind Darko Milicic for the entire year. To refresh your memory, Minnesota that year was running out a starting lineup of Luke Ridnour, Wesley Johnson, Michael Beasley, Kevin Love and Darko. Yeah, you can imagine how bad that team was. In his second year, which was the lockout season in 2012, Pekovic got a lot more playing time because Darko went down with an injury. This was the year where Pekovic broke out into a starting level player and helped form a pretty dynamic offensive front court next to Kevin Love. In the month of February 2012, Pekovic averaged 16 points and grabbed 10 rebounds on 56% shooting. He also led the NBA in offensive rebounding percentage that year. Pekovic's skill set as a dominant post-up center that NBA scouts were watching in Europe was beginning to translate to the NBA, and his amazing strength was a reputation he had amongst other NBA players. Before a game against Minnesota, DeMarcus Cousins told the media that Pekovic is definitely in the top five of the NBA's strongest centers. When Pekovic played against the Utah Jazz, the team used to joke in the locker room about how he could push you out towards the three-point line because he had so much strength. Derek Favors said in an interview that it's hard to think of another player stronger than him, he might be the strongest guy in the league to me. At this point in his NBA career, Pekovic was 6'11", would hover around 300 pounds, and got the nickname The Godfather. As soon as he gets post position on you at the block, it's two points. He was basically a human boulder on offense and in the post. Even if he did not get good post position on you, he'll move you out the way with one dribble and gain an advantage. He knows how to use his body to seal off his defender, he had nice footwork and body fakes to fool his defender. In the 2013 season, the Timberwolves were bad again and the team had to deal with an injury to Kevin Love that kept him out for most of the year. Pekovic played well though and had his highest scoring and rebounding average of his NBA career. In the summer of 2013, he got a $60 million contract extension from Minnesota after forming a nice offensive duo with Ricky Rubio. But in the 2013-2014 season, he would have to go through something that ruined a lot of NBA players, and that is injuries. In his best statistical season of his career, Pekovic missed about 30 games because of an ankle injury. It's unfortunate he went down with an injury because Minnesota won 40 games, and that was their most healthy year together. Their core of Love, Rubio, and Pekovic never had a long stretch of good health together. In December 2013, Pekovic averaged 21 points, grabbed 10 rebounds, and shot 51% from the field. This was by far his most dominant month of his NBA career. Nikola was a good offensive player, but on defense he was bad because of his slow lateral movement and lack of explosiveness. Opponents shot 67% at the rim against Minnesota, which was the worst mark in the league. Having Kevin Love and Pekovic on your team turned out to be a disaster on defense, unsurprisingly. 
For the 2015 season, it was a new time in Minnesota as Kevin Love was gone and Andrew Wiggins was the new star, but Pekovic dealt with more injuries as he only played in 31 games because of a right ankle injury. Yeah, this second injury really derailed his career and Minnesota only won 16 games that year. It's just tough for a human body that is over 300 pounds to deal with an 82 NBA game season. Your body is just going to break down. Nikola's right ankle never got back to normal and he only played in 12 games in 2016. For the 2017 season, he didn't play at all and just sat on the bench for the whole year and was officially waived in June 2017. So what has happened to the Godfather since he's been out of the league? Well, in November 2017, Belgrade police found cocaine, two guns, and ammunition in Pekovic's Audi A4, but he was not in the car. The two men in the car were arrested and taken to the higher prosecutor's office in Belgrade, which is the capital of Serbia. The police ended up finding out that the car is owned by Pekovic and that one of the men who was arrested was employed as Pekovic's personal security. You know, I'm not going to accuse the man of anything, but it gets a little bit more interesting after I did some more research. At Pekovic's wedding in 2016, a news article about the wedding came out and talked about who was there. According to the Google translation of this article that I found, Pekovic's wedding ceremony was held at a hotel owned by Dusko Saric. Saric allowed Pekovic to have the entire hotel to himself and his family for the wedding ceremony. If you do not know who Dusko Saric is, well back in May 2010, he was arrested and eventually sentenced for money laundering charges. Dusko has an older brother named Darko who had his 20 year prison sentence for smuggling tons of cocaine from South America to Europe nullified back in 2016. Media reports say that Darko was the leader of the most successful drug smuggling operation in the region. This media report also says that he was able to be successful at it because of connections with powerful Serbian businessmen and other officials. Yeah, so uh, Pekovic is friends with an alleged drug lord. There's pictures of him and Dusko hanging out, and Pekovic does not hide this friendship with him. He did an interview that you can check in the description, and he said that he met Dusko in 2014, they became closer, and he's going to be the godfather of his child. Pekovic said that him and Dusko have no joint business ventures together, but that does not mean we will not have a business together one day, but only after he is finally acquitted and clean. Ah, that's pretty interesting. Ah. So yeah, that's the story of Nikola Pekovic, arguably the strongest player in the league, and now in 2018, he's enjoying his life back home. This was fun to research about, and I hope it was interesting to listen to. What player should I do next? I'll probably do another poll soon. Always appreciate it if you're still here. If you enjoyed even one part of the video, definitely drop a like as it helps my channel grow. I have a playlist that will pop up in five seconds where you can watch other types of these videos, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Now don't tell me you're taking all this seriously.